Yeah. Episode 24. This is the Harry's Drink It Again podcast. I'm your host, Harry Too Scary Man. Hope everybody had a good 4th of July. But for tonight, we're doing a little uh, Golden Road mango cart. And I'm going to polish off this bottle of Stoli's. Let me cut back on the drinking. I just bought this bottle yesterday. I just bought this bottle yesterday, man. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting a little, I'm having a great time doing this journey. I'm having a great time uh, editing videos. I'm learning a lot. And when I post these clips, they mean a lot to me. Just like when I was making music, you know, it's art. You know, it's, it's my time, my blood, my sweat, my tears, you know, and it's, so I don't want to really rush them anyway. My co-host, Ray G, putting out Blind Dog Productions, putting in that work once again. Looking clean, looking slim, 50-something in. I haven't bust a freestyle foe. A couple weeks and now I'm gonna go. Ray looking strong, he looking slow. Every day eating mango. Staying in the gym drinking water. He's out there looking at them hot daughters in the motherfucking bikinis in the island. And we just over here, we smiling. Uh, it's the Harris is drinking, we always thinking. How to get us some money, how we be thinking. What's up, my brother, brother, brother? What a week, what a week, what a week, folks. What a week. Um, oh, oh, oh. I'm good, man. I'm, you know, getting in the groove. Harry's drinking again. <sighs> Jonah, you, you better own your beats, man. I don't want to get a claim on your shit, man. Hey, man, I tell you what, man. You know what? We got to help this brother out, man. My bad. Damn. Therapeutic wrong ones. We'll play more of his shit when he taps in. Introduce you now, though. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, the first lady of the Harris is Drink It Again podcast, man. Let's step into oh, this. Oh, is she on? Motherfucking Just Unique, a.k.a. the twerking trucker. I got my messy ass closet behind me. You know, unless you're a brother like Dakota who's got nice hair, decide to run the ball. But it looks good on you, brother, man. You got the, you got the, the, the ball look is uh, running on, running strong for you, brother. It's not even about the look, man. It's how I feel, bro. Shout out to the brother Wesley Snipes. Years ago, he was on an interview. Uh, let your ball head, something about let your ball head go and let your soul glow. Some shit like, you know. I heard that before. Let your ball head go and you and let your soul glow or some something along those lines. Because, you know, it costs a lot of money. Whether you're only paying $10, $15, whatever, but every three weeks you got to pay it out. That costs money. So I'm thinking of like, I think I'm just going to grow my shag one length again. But I gotta lose weight because I can't be head, I can't be rocking the long hair and be fat and all that. Nah, that ain't sexy. Hey, hey dude. Cool for cosmetology. I ain't never gotta pay for no haircut. Never yeah. finished, but I got through enough to know what to do. <laughs> but you know what? You know where I grew up is predominantly just Filipinos and blacks. Oh, the Louisville, uh, super clean, but it's um like relaxing. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a thing. I use the old school boot <laughs> after shave. Throw it on the head. You get that burn, that sizzle. <laughs> I mean, brute by men and picking up, spray a little, uh, got some precise, high karate, got some different clones, smooth. And I throw, I throw my little, uh, bottom knee oil or my little head lotion, yeah. whatever I do, head lotion, shine. Hey, what about that? What about that body, uh, body spray called Axe? Hey, my Bro. kid's dad played that shit out. Axe is so night, so 2002, <laughs> right. Right. So for a while there, I was plugged on Axe. I had every kind of Axe spray, body wash, deodorant, you name it, under the sun. Yeah, that shit got played out to me. I'd rather smell your natural smell or a good cologne. It, when I smell Axe, it reminds me of a seventh grade fucking locker room, dude. Like after, I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> it's, 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 
horrible. No grown man should be spraying axe or bod on your bod. Like you should. <laughs> like I've been partial to Prada lately because I got two bottles of this bomb ass Prada mm. for men. So right now I, I got some Versace for men. I have Prada, the Prada Luna Rosa, Prada Carbon, and the uh, Polo Blue. Yeah. But like if we're talking just cheap baseline colognes, like I, I stay with some Michael Jordan mm. cologne. Uh, also, Adidas cologne is still fucking classic. I got a couple of like eighty hundred dollar bottles of cologne, and um, I just you just notice the difference in those, bro. Like so much. You guys remember the Calvin Klein, Klein's obsession? This was during yeah. Like, How could I forget? Yeah, yeah, right. I was obsessed. You remember uh, Stetson? Stetson, oh, yeah. Stetson yeah. I, I use I use slices of Stetson. You know, shout out, shout, shout out to all my Chicano homies, the 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 three flower, and uh, you know, I go to the men's section and. I get all my hygiene products and shit for Walmart. I just been doing the Dollar Shave Club stuff. You know, for men, they got the, you know, little $10 dollar little razor and, you know, a little uh, Barbasol. But now they got all these different high, high end, you know, old school, like thick yeah. razors. You know, they're they're really uh, trying to cater to that market. But a good but a good razor, though, if you put some cheap ass razor that I use, man, you get nothing but ass razor. I was thinking about getting one of those. That shit yeah. looks dangerous. I don't even know if I trust myself. Okay. But the actual shaving, like I got, I got that shit mastered now. I've been, like I've been shaving my balls, man. For real. I've never nicked my ball sack in my life. Thank oh God. yeah. No. Why is every time Justice is on the <laughs> show? Well, we end up talking about dicks all the time. Like, is this what know? happens when you like mix like men and women? Like, like it's naturally gonna go animalistic and. <laughs> I have to say I'm proud of myself. I've never nicked myself while shaving my downstairs either. Moist, or like her fucking flavored soiled panties. Oh my god, I fucking. Oh, I can only imagine <laughs> a dog like me. You know, like I, I wish we could like record. Maybe we should start doing that. Record our conversation, Dakota, after the show. Cause a lot of times when we get off the air. And we're just talking, just man to man. The code not be like, oh, bro, man, fuck, man. We, we should, man, we should, we should have talked. Man, we should just like, and I'm party. going, yeah, like, you know what? We just record every single conversation because brother and I have like, my brother and I have some great man to man conversations. You know? oh! I think so, you know, oh! then you'll get me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Right. I'll be back. I'll be back. Keep it, keep it rolling. Oh, I got some shit. Wow. So we're going to read some poetry, guys. Bear with us here. We're going to read some written. Just If you're just tapping in, look at this. English notebook. This is like from seventh fucking grade. Look at this. This is archives, baby. Hey, look how nice my handwriting. Well, I go from this because, you know, I'm all sorts of different things. But look at it. Okay, Mr. Penmanship. But that was like when I'm like, probably that's probably when I took Adderall and I was focused that day in class. <laughs> Like that. I think I'm gonna find the poems that I read in Seattle back in 2009. Slam jams, uh, something. See, I, I did this uh, slam jam poetry in Seattle. Okay, I don't have a date for this, but this is young shit. This is like way. This is like under 18 shit for sure. But listen to the mindset, right? I can be what I want to be if I try it. Might be hard and I might cry, but that's okay because I don't care what people think anymore i'm gonna go where i want to go i'm gonna do what i want to do i'm gonna be what i want to be sometimes i want to fly away and be free nobody else can be me but me and that's just the way it is i'm tired of this lifestyle and the way i live every day it's the same old shit i'm trying to change it but sometimes i think i'll never make it i want to get up and out on my feet and go take a ride or run along the beach all of my life I've been a nobody, but now I want to be a somebody. And once I get going, ain't nothing gonna hold me back. And that's a fact. I ain't gonna quit or cut myself some slack because I'm tired of my life <laughs> and the way I live it. And I'm not afraid to admit it. It's time for a change. It's time to make a statement. I don't care if I'm loved or hated. <laughs> Damn. Now, let me ask you this. After reading that at your age now and what you were going through back then, you look at it now and how you progress in life. What's your thoughts on that? I hear a I hear a a, a kid who lacked confidence, who was insecure. But this a, a lot of hate like um tired of this lifestyle. You know, that 
and the way I live every day, it's the same old shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of, um, I've always been this um, morose, I don't know, uh, mundane, or what do you call it, cynical, like, just, you know what I'm saying? Dark humor. I fucking, I, ha- I have to make the dirtiest joke. I'm still kind of that same kid, bro. Like, still trying to find myself. <laughs> Wow. What else can you share with us, man? I want to hear more. I got some hate-filled shit right here. I got some hate-filled shit. Bro. I was a young, angry motherfucker. I still kind of am. Got a lot of hate up in my soul, man. And, um, I mean, maybe I do, maybe I don't. I think I do. I have, like, I have a certain disdain. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm, so, I'm just a naturally negative, pessimistic kind of guy. But, um, I got this very personal rhyme right here, man. Yo, 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 yo. Right here. Mm. I have so much fucking anger. Sometimes I feel like I'm gonna explode and start busting caps like a gangbanger. I don't know why I get this mad. Sometimes I just break down and get real sad. I don't know what the hell it is. Maybe it's something that gives me another reason to live. Or something that keeps me from going off the cliff. My whole life has been kind of fucked up. Maybe it was all those years of moving from town to town, switching schools, never getting a chance to fit in and be cool. I've always been an outsider and felt unstable, but now I'm going to turn the fucking table and try to get my life back on track. Damn right. I'm black, half white, and I will attack. If you don't like it, then lick my nutsack. Don't piss me off or I'll shoot you in the back, motherfucker. Right? And I ain't going to. I was only five when my parents split up, but now I don't give a fuck. My dad can kiss my ass and go to hell. Maybe I'll send him a bomb in the mail. He's a bitch who could suck my dick and eat my shit. He has never been there for me. Fuck a story. He's a motherfucking liar who doesn't know how to raise a kid. He has six of them. I couldn't give a damn about where they live or where he's been. He's had 10 wives and never gotten it right. He's always cheated on them and partied all night. He's never kept a job and wouldn't matter if he got robbed. He is the one I blame for the way my life has turned out. He should go to hell without a doubt. I don't know. It's like 13, 14. He's a bitch and I hate him. Rest in peace, by the way. I don't have these feelings currently. Uh, He's a bitch and I hate him. Why the fuck would any bitch date him? He's an old stinky, (laughs) stinky, wrinkly motherfucker who's always tired and never feels good. He should just die. I wish he would. He ain't shit or any good. Never calls me or comes by. He always makes excuses and lies. When I was little, I always had to go see him and call. He never ever did shit for me, and he always made my mom worry and made her go through shit she never had to go through. There's so much shit that he put me and my mom's through. I could write a novel, but that's, but that's, he'll pay for it one day, but until then, fuck him. (laughs) Then it goes into some more crazy shit, but I'll stop there. But this, hmm. Yeah, I actually remember writing this. I was in Las Vegas. I was in Las Vegas, sitting on my floor in the room around this time of year, actually. I I specifically remember this. Yeah, sitting there. I remember like pinning this shit out. I think I mailed him. I wrote him another one and I mailed it to him or something. And it's crazy, man. Mailed him like some. You know what I'm thinking? It's kind of like that. That. <clears throat> that letter or poetry that you just wrote, man. You know how many people feels that way. That's a relatable subject. Yeah, man. And because it came from the heart at the time you wrote it, that makes it even more viable. Yeah. Let's create it. Let's create a a, a a track song for that, man. Add that to your catalog, my brother. Let's do it. It's express. Do you have a title for that? Yeah. I just I hate my dad. Hate my dad. I hate you, Dad. You know, I'm not afraid to admit it. So, like, I, I was honest back then. You know, I'm still honest now. Like, hey, this is what I do. Fucking have this addiction or this or this or, you know, yeah. <laughs> Elementary rhymes, man. But uh, Elementary rhymes, yeah. You know, he's a cool man. That, you know, uh, later in life, I went to go live with them. You know, that's when I met you. When I, oh, okay. I tried to go live with them twice. I got around 14 and you know wasn't working then I came you know and I left Vegas when I dropped out of high school and shot up to Reno and tried to live in with him again but at that point he straight up told me he's like son you're almost a fucking man he's like 
he ain't, you know, I think he gave me to like 1 a.m. or, you know, I was like 17. He's like, as soon as you're 18, you can do what the fuck you want, you know, get you a job. And, um, you know, he was cool though. Like, you know, he's yeah. very, I, love, very I love my stepmom though, man. Shout out to her. She, uh, is a super big influence on my life, man. She's like dope ass lady, bro. She, she was, she was his like 11th wife. I believe <clears throat> he had 10. Yeah. I think my mom was either nine or 10 and she was 10 or 11. He was a rolling man, stone, man. You know, I guess back in his day, country music singer and uh, him and oh, his okay. brother in the band. And, you know, he would do all them, all the casinos, bro. He was like back in the day, all the, the Vegas and the, the uh, up in the arena, all the tours, just all over Nevada and Wyoming and just do that country music thing, doing coke until he was like 55, fucking drinking, fucking hookers and all sorts of wild shit, man. I got that same, yeah, we- same, same stuff in me, man. Even though we don't share the same. Man.